Thank you very much. I would like to thank first, or we would like to thank first, uh, the organizers of this conference and of the Eschilia for having us. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's really nice to see some old faces. Um, where does this get me best? Here? Yes? That's good? All right. So who are we? I'm not going to go because we're not the first group and we won't be the last group to present our dissertation. I'm Alexandros Costas. I have here Luisa Calias and Semina Tsiga. We are three students, recent graduates of the uh, Masters for Heritage Management from the University of Kent and AUEB Athens. Um, and we're going to present today our research, our project on um, a new approach to the development of the Gaddafi House Museum in Alexandria, Egypt. This research was done in collaboration with the Hellenic Foundation for Culture. This is, the, um, this is an arm of the Hellenic Ministry of Culture, and they are the ones who are responsible for disseminating culture abroad. Outside of Greece, in other countries, they're represented in America, in Europe, and also in Alexandria. Um, the name of our project, or what we propose for what we will discuss now about the House Museum. The House Museum is simply the residence where Gaddafi lived in Alexandria for the last 40 years of his life. Um, this small apartment has been made into a museum as sort of a time capsule of Alexandria of then, um, the way that Gaddafi would have had it in his atmospherics, and it is also a sort of time capsule and a um, an honorary monument to the poet himself. Gavafi is a 19th and 20th century poet, a Greek who was born in Alexandria. Alexandria has a very rich history of, um, Greek, of a Greek colony and a Greek community which still exists there today um, from antiquity until the present time. And um, his museum represents that time. Like I said, the 1800s to the early 1900s, uh, yes, 1900s, the early 20th century. We chose for our proposal to call it the Gaddafi Project Center. I would just like to highlight why project. Project for us, first of all, CPC um, are the initials of the poet himself. Also project because we have, uh, that word evokes an ongoing process. This is not going to be a static establishment, something that does only one thing, but something that evolves. And so in the same way that a project is an ongoing process, so will be the CPC. Let's begin then with what is happening in the world today, our perceptions from the West of the rest of the world. It is not good, um, but regularly, uh, normally throughout history, perceptions of the world are actually quite dire. So we have, um, we have war, we have crisis in a financial way and in a humanitarian way. We have natural disasters and global warming. We have the deliberate and purposed destruction of cultural heritage. Now, these things are not the first time. These are all threats to heritage. They're not the first time they have been presented in human history. Um, however, it is the first time in our human history that we, especially in the West, have the luxury to sit in a conference and discuss these things. This does not always happen. We see it more in the news, um, and we're able to speak. We're able to do something about it. This is what the CPC is meant to be. The CPC is going to be um, a center that is proactive in the establishment of protection because we see culture as a binding, it's a unifying element. Culture is that which brings us together. It can bring us together in different ways, in tangible and intangible ways we have heard throughout this conference. Um, culture is the cure to what's wrong with the world today. And we want the CPC to be the catalyst for that cure in that part of the world. Something where we can bring Greeks, because they have their heritage there, Egyptians together, as well as Europeans. Bring all of these people together in one place, under one roof, and see what might happen. It is better than dropping a bomb on a place to try to destroy it. Instead, go in, create a cultural center, and learn from the people. We're not here to teach them, but to take from them back and forth, a dialogue. Why Egypt? Why now? This seems a little bit counterintuitive, especially because, um, 
because Egypt is a place that is viewed, especially in Europe, as a place that is under great threat all the time. This is simply not true. There are parts of the country indeed that are um, threatening, not for the entirety of the country, certainly not in Alexandria. Alexandria remains a very European city within the Middle East. It is a geographic place. Egypt has the canal. Egypt has currently a, an international um, campaign to bring in tourism and foreign investment. Egypt is heritage. If we're going to talk about managing heritage resources, Egypt is a heritage resource, as is Alexandria, as is Kavafi, and we would like to use the CPC as the thing that brings those things together that manages those resources. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you a little bit about who our target audience is. And I'd like you to meet Mohammed. Mohammed is 26 years old. He lives in Alexandria. He loves meeting new people, hanging out with his friends, going to the cinema, reading a book. He also, every now and then, might visit the Library of Alexandria. He might even attend a seminar, not fanatically, every now and then. Every now and, then. <laughs> and now, I'd like you to meet Samia. Samia is 29 years old, she's a teacher, and she's very proud of her local culture and she enjoys sharing it with her pupils. She likes to take them to museums for day trips, to archaeological sites. If she hears about a new exhibition in town, she'll be there with her students. Uh, but unfortunately, even though she loves to travel, uh, it's very hard for her to leave the country, by law actually. It's very hard for her to get a visa and even her parents wouldn't allow it very easily, no matter how old, how old she is. And now I'd like you to meet Eric. Eric is 37 years old. He's a writer and an artist, and he lives in Austria. He's currently working on his PhD in literature, and he loves to travel as well. He loves cycling, he loves the opera, he likes poetry, he'll go to a poetry night, and, of course, he's a great uh, couch surfer, so... Now, there weren't any pictures of these people, they were imaginary, of course, but what do they have in common? They all have a need, a need to connect with something deeper, and a need to share their thoughts, their love, their experiences, their passion, exchange things about themselves and learn things about other people and other cultures. Don't we all? So, just imagine a place where Mohammed can browse in the, in the library, pick up a book, walk up to the rooftop, sit and have his coffee, enjoy his book, enjoy the view. He can then later on walk downstairs and attend a seminar, or have a chat in one of the exhibition rooms, a place where Samia can take her students on a regular basis to attend educational programs, combining theater, education, and fun. She can take them to visit exhibitions and learn more about Kavafi and his heritage. And imagine a place where Eric can stay in an artist's retreat for as long as he'd like, uh, he can do his research for his PhD, he can paint, he can com meet people of the local community. All of this under one roof, in one place. Now, on the top left, you can see a picture of the building that we propose to become the CPC Center, as it is today. Below there's a sketch where we've designated each floor and room to a particular service. You can see a nice large rooftop for the rooftop cafe, we're very proud of. Uh, as you can see, uh, one flat will be for offices, another for exhibition space, the artist's resident, the actual museum, of course, with the exhibition, a library, a reading center, where we'll also have a digital archive, uh, a space for conferences, a museum shop, a uh, room for storage, it's all there. 
And this is just the side of the building, the corner. And here is a floor plan of the house museum as it is today. There are six different rooms. Each have an exhibition with a different theme. And of course, the staff room, storage, and other facilities. Now, so the services that we propose will be offered at the CPC are, of course, educational programs for children aged 6 to 12, uh, which will be small play, theatrical play, fun, and around Gavafi's life and experiences and the time he lived in Alexandria, his era. Also, we propose educational programs for older children and teenagers, uh, such as the Collective Think Tank and the City as a Venue, which we discuss the concept in our project. Uh, we also have proposed activities for tourists and visitors, such as day camps, seminars, uh, and yes, and of course we have a digital archive, and uh, people will be able to become members of this uh, center. Uh, the artist residence, the cafe, the library, and the museum. And this is... But what underlies the services development, and in general the direction that the CPC wants to take, is our vision. To be an active, dynamic research center, where a broad audience can attend, of all ages, with outstanding exhibitions and facilities, to be an inspired abode full of experiences and venues so that it can quench the thirst of everyone that is interested in culture and the arts, and ultimately to be a valuable vehicle of engagement and dialogue driven by the community, because the core of this project is the community, is something that drives uh, the people, and it is from the people for the people. But where is Kavafi in all this? In the center of all this, we have the poet and his work, and from his work derives the follow thematics that actually align all the vision that he has and what we were trying to do. He was a poet, a man, that tried to depict the world from a different perspective, how everyday reality can be transformed into art, to play with the boundaries between what's real and what is unreal. And he wanted to convey and uh, to challenge the status quo through contemplation. His imagery is rather unsettling. He's not talking about utopias. He's talking about reality, everyday life, and we know the world is a harsh place. But that's there, and we have to live with it, and we have to find our identities, to explore our identities, and uh, discuss them with other people, and to eventually understand the world by this interaction. He represents the voice of multiculturalism in a city where traditionally being the microcosm of uh, cosmopolitan microcosm of East and West, and how to exist in this intercultural environment. He highlighted neglected personas, as uh, very elegantly Professor Gistanis placed it, it, to that which history disregards, the poet salvages. And that's what he did. He talked about minorities, he talked about unique personalities, he talked about everyone that was neglected. So he wanted to bring to the spotlight the everyday man, the community. And this is what we very much treasure and we want to pursue. Kavafi's vision was much greater to the than the immediate re reality he lived in. Today is needed more than ever to foster thinking sideways, to be an outsider looking in, to be an insider looking out. He didn't hesitate to disrupt, challenge and provoke his time. And this is why we were inspired to approach the House Museum from a different perspective and create the CPC. And the product of all this work is uh, what we propose, is a hybrid business plan. The House Museum is the place where a man lived. It's about his work and about his time. So we're talking in a broader sense about something that is intangible through the vehicle of something tangible like the house itself. So primarily it is a cultural study of, uh, to understand the needs of the community and how to incorporate those needs and give them back to the people. 
And of course we incorporated uh, traditional elements of a business plan, so of how to develop all this idea and how this can be practical, because it's feasible. And our main strategy, the, the one we want to take, is not to be a competitive uh, institution, but rather to work in the same cultural landscape are as the existing cultural institutions. We want it to be a pivotal point of collaboration and to encourage synergies. And this is a brief uh, showing of the map of the cultural landscape. What is there today and the major players that we want to play along. And to conclude, we would like to say that heritage culture, heritage management, it is not only about um, architecture and archaeology, about the um, tangible and intangible. Culture and cultural heritage management is about people. That is what the CPC is. Because heritage, for us, um, is about people, as I said, and people are the business part of heritage management. Thank you very much.